<laughs> I made August my bitch. Hello, dear watcher. Sam is here, and I have had one of the best reading months ever. Oh my gosh. I don't think I've ever read this much in a single month. Um, I have read 16 books this month. Holy crap. So here's my wrap up, everything I read, and some thoughts on them. All right, so I'm coming to you from my blue void. We kicked off August with a bang. It was one of my very few five-star reads of the year so far, and that was A Cotto Witch by Nettie Okorafor. I have never read anything by Nettie Okorafor before. That was fun to say. Uh, but I've heard great things about Akata Witch, and it's about these, uh, a Sunny who's, you know, they're, they're home in Africa again, and she, she learns that she's a leopard person, and that basically means that she has magic within her. Um, some families, it's generation to generation, they all know about it. She really didn't know much about her past, so she had to learn about it. They took on the big bad. I cannot wait to read Akata Warrior. And I'll get to that one very soon. But Akata Witch started off with a bang. Loved it. The next book is book one to the last video that I had, which is The Selection. Thought I was going to hate it. I've, I've been picking up some fluffier books so I could practice reading a little faster, um, practice some of my speed reading skills, and I ended up loving this book, I really, really enjoyed it. It was so much fun. Uh, it's by no means perfect. I hate the name of the main character. <laughs> I don't, it's just, it's not a good name, but whatever. It's a fun story, dystopian bachelor-esque, and it's a blast. The next one, which I have a physical copy of, is Avatar The Last Airbender, The Promise. Now, I watch Murphy Nepier's videos, and she, I was always skipping the Avatar ones, because I am not a huge fan of um, anime. I, I just have bad luck with it. I've seen some of them, I'm always willing to give it a try. And then she wore me down, and I was like, fine, I'll give this a try. It's on Netflix. And I fell in love with Avatar, and as soon as I finished it, I went and got this one and I'm gonna read the rest of them. Can't wait, very excited. The next book I learned about from Elliot Brooks and I thought, hey, this sounds really cool. I like magical realism and that is The Kingdom of Beck and I ended up loving it. Oh, this book was beautiful, I loved it. I did listen to it on audio so I got proper pronunciations of things like the Gaitorgast and because I never would have pronounced that properly in my head or Gaitorgast. There we go. So you gotta get that emphasis on the correct syllable. But Kingdom of Back, I actually switched it from four star to five star because, okay, I gave Akata Witch five stars. Kingdom of Back I gave four, but that's the one I think about more. So I wasn't, I, I don't know why I gave it a four or why I felt that way. And for a while I'm like, I should bump it up to, so I just bumped it up to a five star read because if Akata Witch is five stars, to me, then Kingdom of Back should definitely be five stars because I think about that one a lot more. My dog wants to join me, but she's not sure. I think she's afraid of the tripod. Come here. Come on. You are such a... That's a girl. Yeah, it's a girl. Oh, yes. Okay. This is She-Ra, Princess of Power, P-A-W-E-R, because I can't resist a pun. So she was going to join us for the rest of this. The next one was one that I got for free on a BookBub um, sale list. And it just sounded cute. And it's called The Switching Hour, Magic and Mayhem Number 1 by Robin Peterman. <laughs> the cover of this book makes it sound like it's going to be this little like young adult novel or something. There is a raunchy sex scene in it, so don't let it... Don't let it... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fool you it's definitely um it's definitely like a romance and there's cursing in it it was a blast I don't know if I'm gonna go on to the other ones uh, like I said it was a free book I got it for fun and I just just 
I was feeling like I wanted something light and fluffy and that was definitely it. Next, I read All the Stars and Teeth. Did not know that this was going to go on to be a series. I tend to lean towards standalones more than a series because a series is... Excuse me. Because the series has a lot... Um, there's a lot of commitment to them and my brain jumps back and forth between genres, jumps back and forth between authors and I'm a massive mood reader and I get into really bad reading slumps. So a series can be daunting to me, but whatever. All the stars and teeth. I listened to this one on audio. Now the narrator did a great job. I, I don't know if it was the way she did the the dialogue but the the book sounded more young on the young adult side than adult so when there was like some sexual tension between two characters i was like a little uncomfortable because i'm thinking aren't these guys a little too young for this because she just sounded young and so that's the only real issue i had with it other than that i thought it was a it was a fun book i mean you can't beat pirates and mermaids the next book I read was the very first book that I read for the Scallywagathon, which was my first readathon, and I had a blast. I will participate in more. I really liked it. But that was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, and she narrates that book herself on audio, which is why I listened to it on audio. It I related to it so much. It was another five-star read for me. The Poet X, X is short for Ziamata. She is a woman or she's a young woman who's trying to find her way in the world. She doesn't really fit in with her family. Uh, you know, they're hyper-religious. She wants to ask questions. She wants someone to hear her, to see her. And poetry is has become her outlet. And when she finds it, she just falls in love with it. And her first performance, she just falls in love with performing it. And it's, it's heartwarming and there's a couple heartbreaking parts there's a lot of things in there I related to and it just felt kind of personal and I I really enjoyed it the next book was the kiss quotient by Helen Huang a lot of people have talked about this book and said how much they love it did not think I would enjoy contemporary or modern romance but oh my gosh I loved this book so there is a classic trope in here of like, well, why don't they just talk to each other? But I think what the author did was really smart, was she actually gave them an avenue to not, validly not talk to each other. His profession, her Asperger's, did not allow them to talk freely with one another to just communicate. And so she gave them a driver for that trope to work. So tropes can work. This is a great example of it. And I thought it was it was smart. It was funny. I laughed out loud. It was sexy. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I, there were there are some updates about that book that I was like, okay, this is getting steamy right now. So just it was so fun. Next, I read a graphic novel called Witchy, and Witchy is by Ariel Slamet Riez. Riez, I am so sorry if I said that wrong, but Witchy is a tale of uh, a magical land. Uh, where the power of your magic is is determined by the length of your hair. Our main character, her father, was taken away and killed because his hair was too long. It was gonna be too powerful, and they don't. the The big guy in charge of their government and society didn't like that. So I have some theories as to where this one is gonna go in the future. Then I read the second book for the Scallywagathon, which was Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. This one, my other dog just entered the room. Hi, sweetie pie. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, anyway. Um, five years old, 11 years old, and they're just demo babies. Anyway, so Tuck Everlasting is about a family that found a spring that makes them live forever. And the big question in the book is, is living forever a blessing or a curse? And the family thinks one way about it. Other people think another way about it. It's a very short book. It's only about 150, 160 pages. So more of a novella size. And little, little Winnie, a child in the book, finds the spring, finds the family, and they have to convince her of their side, you know, whether it's a blessing or a curse. And then you find out at the end of the book if she drank from the well or not. The next one was another book for the Scallywagathon. My goodness, 
Goodreads and Audible keep recommending this genre to me, even though I have read one book and I did not even rate this book. I read my first Amish romance, finally, and it's called The Bake Shop, Amish Marketplace, book one. And it is by Amy Clipston. Super cute. Um, Amish baker opens up a bake shop right next to a leather and woodworking shop and trouble ensues and then they fall in love and then oh no they can't be in love because traditions um, but it's okay because we're both Amish and yes so it it was it was actually it was cute it was tooth achingly sweet at times that I just it was everything I wanted to get from an Amish romance. I'll just put it that way. The next book I read and really loved is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is my first Sanderson book other than a short story that I read um, at the beginning of the year a few months ago. But Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Spensa is me at 15. Oh my goodness, or whatever, however old she was. I am highly competitive. <laughs> I've been in martial arts since I was eight years old. I fought competitively and, you know, in the military, military is also competitive. So it's just, I'm a competitive person. I played sports, this, that, and the other, all those things. Spensa is just that hard-headed, kind of cocky, but she's still a good person. Uh, she's just this hard-headed character that I adore. Doom Slug is so stinking adorable. I just, I love Doom Slug. And, okay. Mbot is great, but if you have read The Expeditionary Force by Alan Craig, narrated by R.C. Bray, which is so good, there is a character in there, in there called Skippy. Mbot is fantastic, but Skippy is like the adult version of Mbot. And Skippy is my, is my, uh, you know, spirit celestial being. So Mbot and Skippy are fantastic, but Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, fantastic. Absolutely loved it. I adore memoir. And this one is brand new. I waited, tw well, it was on hold, it said 12 weeks, but it came in more about eight uh, from my library. The answer is Reflections on My Life by Alex Trebek. Guys, I was crying at the end of this book. He is, he is terminally ill with cancer right now and he kind of knows he doesn't have long. And so he just wanted to some reflections on his life. He didn't want to preach to anyone. He's He talked about how much he cares about his charities. Uh, the proceeds to his book are going to, to charities, and I'm going to be buying a book, buying a physical copy for that reason. Um, I'm gonna cry just thinking about it. Oh my gosh, I cried at the end of this book. It's just what is important to him? Why is it important? how Jeopardy changed his life, the things he did before Jeopardy, it's amazing. Now, my family got together every week to watch Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Love it, my grandmother still watches it. But I did listen to the audiobook because I love memoir on audio, especially when the author narrates it. That is the best way to consume it. Alex Trebek did not read the whole thing and I was really disappointed at first. I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, and he'll read a chapter here and there. But there's a reason he does not read the whole book. And when you find out that reason, you understand. It's completely understandable. The person he got to read the rest is a good friend of his. So it was really awesome. Actually, in the audiobook, uh, Alex Trebek will be like, all right, well, I'm going to take this chapter because I don't want you talking about it, it because it might be a little weird uh, you talking about my relationship with my wife. So I'm going to take this one and then it's like, well, I'm going to hand it back off to you. So it's like they were talking to each other while narrating the book. It was really sweet. Great way to do it. Um, I, I think I would listen to it again. He's just, he's a gem of a human. And then after that was The Deep by River Solomon. Yeah. 
I had really high hopes for this one. I, I didn't dislike it. It was a good book. It was very good. It was beautifully written. I think I would have rather read it physically than listen to it on audio. I know that the narrator is in Hamilton and everyone loves him, rightfully so, but I did not connect the audiobook at all. I did, I could not stand his narration. It was so flat and to me and it was so void of personality to me and if you feel differently that is perfectly fine people connect with things on different at different times in different ways this did not hit it for me so i may give this a reread i do not tend to reread but i think i'll do it with a physical copy because i did not enjoy the audio beautiful book though next was the subject of my last video and that was the selection to the elite so you know my feelings on this already it was a blast lots of fun and then we end August, book number 16, with one of my all-time favorite book covers. I love looking at it. I can't stop looking at it. It's gorgeous. But one of my most disappointing reads, and that was Wilder Girls. Now, my next video is on the body horror books I'm reading, and those Wilder Girls and The Troop, which I have like two hours left in as of this recording. So I'll get further into Wilder Girls there. I'll just leave you with this. Like, a lot happens while nothing happens at the same time, and that frustrates me so much. So, uh, let me know what you read in August. What are you reading in September? I don't do TBRs typically because I'm really bad at sticking with them. <laughs> My dog's a goof. Don't really have an ending or a sign-off or anything. So I'm just gonna say bye.